All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's Anna Gibbs, and I'm excited about today's show because I'm joined by someone who I have been following and connected to for a long, long time. Um, I consider her a friend and a mentor, and that is Fabienne Fredrickson. And um, Fabienne is a speaker, a coach, a best-selling author, someone who is passionate about helping women, entrepreneurs really um, build a big business. And she can tell us a little bit about, you know, how she did that herself, probably more than once and scaled her business um, in a way that allowed her not only to earn seven figures, but to enjoy her life and really put her family and her passions at the forefront of how she is uh, living and and really showing up as an entrepreneur. And that's what she teaches others. And I am excited to have you here with us, Fabienne. Welcome to Monday Morning Thank you. It's so lovely to be here. And thank you for that lovely introduction. You really like, I feel like you get me. <laughs> I, I feel like I get you too. You know, I first, um, I don't know how I came across you, but I first um, started to, to follow you and really work through a lot of your um, teaching and coaching and gone to several of your events and had the pleasure of talking to you from, from the stage after one of them. Um, and you really did help me to get clear and to really focus on, you know, launching my coaching practice uh, when I did that back in 2011. So mm -hmm. that's when I first connected with you. And um, I think I, I would venture to say a lot of people probably feel like they get you because one of the things that I've always admired is how transparent you are. I mm -hmm. think that you really show up, you know, very authentically. And, um, you know, maybe we'll just kind of jump into uh, let you tell us a little bit about your story and how you've gotten to to where you are today, which I know is a, a, yeah, a I'd be happy question. To. <laughs> I'd be happy to. I'll give you the, sh the short version. Um, I was in corporate for eight years and I just realized I was completely unemployable. Um, yeah. It was just, it felt like even though they were nice people, it was supposed to be my ideal job. Um, I realized this was like leading me towards a, a soul sucking existence. So I know that I'm an entrepreneur and I quit my corporate job 23 years ago. And I thought, you know, I was in advertising and marketing and sales. I, I've got this client attraction thing. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have this. And I had a lot of dark nights of the soul and, you know, um, I had to figure it out. I had to be in faith. I had to, I knew that going back to corporate was just going to be like a slow death. I'm, I, I'm, I get that it's okay for some people. It's just not okay for me. And so I had to do something to get clients because the credit card companies were calling Yeah. and uh, I hustled and I created a little client attraction system for myself. But what I realized is everything I... I was, I was trying to figure out they were all in different places. Um, like I wanted to close the sale. I wanted to figure out my ideal client. I wanted to market. Uh, I wanted to do a lot of different things. And um, two, the two problems were happening. Either I, they were not all in one place. So I had to like work with a lot of different people. Um, and some of it was really inauthentic. And if I look back now, there was a lot of like bro marketing, bro selling, bro networking, bro running your business. I love the guys, but I am not that way. And I think there was a lot of energy around hit people over the head with the two by four. I'm mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. I am not doing that. So long story already long. I created this client attraction system for myself. I filled my practice within uh, eight months and everybody started paying attention. Like, how did you, how'd you do that? And I was like, oh, let's have tea. I'll tell you, I'll give you some things to do. All of that to say, I started teaching people my client attraction system and I became known uh, as the client attraction system girl. And that was 23 years ago. And then I, you know, I, I got married. I had my first baby. I have three teenagers now. And I got to six figures and my husband was like, Hey, are you sure you can handle any more clients? Because we never see you. Mm -hmm. You're working on evenings and weekends. And it was like a punch to the gut, uh, like energetically, not from him. He's super supportive. Right. It was like, wait, an awakening, I, like an awareness. 
it was a total awareness. Like, wait, is there another way to do this? Cause I can't get to multiple six figures. I'm already overwhelmed. I'm already working evenings and weekends. I'm bringing my laptop on vacations and I'm saying one more email and mommy will be right there way too often. And like this guilt, right? And so I figured out what, so I had previously created the client attraction system. Now I needed to figure out a way to get to multiple six figures, but get my life back. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing was, I want to make twice as much working half the time. So yes, right. Don't we all that's, and, and, you know, I think, and not to interrupt you, but I think people hear that and they like roll their eyes and say, sure. Yeah. I know it sounds cheesy, right? I know it sounds cheesy. It sounds like thinner thighs in 30 days. Like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but you know what? I started again. I started like learning. I I, I read a lot. I invest in myself a lot. I went to masterminds. I went to, you know, three day events, five day events, all the things. Mm -hmm. And I did a combination of working on the strategy and working on my mindset. Uh, my wealth consciousness, my beliefs, my self-image. And I was learning from all, again, all the guys. I was in all the guy masterminds when they're having jalapeno or habanero eating contests. I'm like, I got three little babies at home. Let's get on this. Yeah, right. I'm in Arizona. I'm in Palm Springs. I live in Connecticut. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Suburban and steak night event, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Bourbon. I mean, you know, I I love a cocktail, but like I'm I I need to make this count. All of that to say, I had to translate everything I was hearing to more of a feminine approach. Because yeah. again, like that whole like somehow we women can smell when something in is is inauthentic, right? So all of that to say, I created another system for myself and I'm happy to tell, like to share all of it with you um, uh, here that, and it eventually got me to seven figures. Mm -hmm. And because I love my downtime, it had to be non-negotiable that I had to have a lot of downtime, a lot of unplugged vacations. Without the guilt. Without the guilt, right? I wanted to be able to, leave my business for like a week without thinking I have to bring my laptop or check in, but that it could still continue to grow. And I really wanted to like be actually building the sandcastles with the kids and, and sitting in the, you know, waiting pool with them and helping them with their floaties and and all of that. And I wanted to increase my impact and all of that. So all of that to say, fast forward to today, 23 years since the day that I started my business, um, I've been at multiple seven figures now for 15 years, multiple seven figures a year for 15 years. And I did it through the concept of leverage. Yeah. And it's just about doing less better. So if I'm happy to share whatever you want me to share about that, it's all yeah. in the book anyway. I have, I wrote a book yes. called The Leverage Business. Which I have. You have? (laughs) I do. Yes. I read the book. I think it's fantastic. And you know that there's several things now going through my mind and and things that I think we can touch on um, and and definitely want to talk about leverage. I do want to go back to something that you said, you know, men do business different than women. And, you know, I, um, I've been in the corporate world and I I call myself a serial entrepreneur. Um, You know, I have own and manage several businesses. And I've been working since I was 18. And, you know, when I think back, something that you said um, really triggered a thought, you know, when I think back to where I was in my life in my twenties and, you know, who was around me, who I was listening to, there were, you know, a lot of male figures, even, you know, for a long time, right. The Stephen Coveys and the Jim Rohns, and not to say that there's, they were not teaching us valuable Great guys, the, the great brilliant, right? Yeah, yeah. And as women, we need more women m- mentors and, and role models. And and again, I've talked to a lot of women in business recently because I'm very aware of this right now about women needing to stand up and be honest about the fact that we do business different and we have different mm-hmm. needs. We carry different responsibilities, you know. Um, and again, like you said, it's not to put our male counterparts down. It's just to empower ourselves 
to be honest about, you know, what we need and how we need it. I think we process information differently. I think that we um, approach leadership differently, you know, so I think that that is what's so powerful about where your business has taken you because you've really touched millions of women over the last 20 years and given them, you know, the support and the encouragement to to be, I know your, your, the new name of your business, Braveheart, to stand in their truth and to yeah. say, yes, you can be successful in business and powerful and a leader and also have a softer side that wants to sit on the beach and make sandcastles with your kids. Yeah. And I want to, I want to, I want to dive into this just a little bit. If you'll, yeah, I'd love to. I've been studying for quite some time. I've been studying the creation of patriarchy. <laughs> I've been studying like, the the divine feminine. Uh, I'm a spiritual person. I don't know yeah. if, if you guys are as you're listening to this, but what I've what I've been uh, studying polarity and yin and yang. And um, if you look at nature, everything in nature works when it's balanced, yin and yang, or we can also call it masculine and feminine. Mm. And I've been studying the energy of the masculine, not men, but the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And the masculine energy is a really like um, linear energy. And it is a push energy. It is a competitive energy. It is a, um, it is a like go for the kill energy, action, action. Yeah. And the feminine energy is not linear. It's collective. It's circular. It's intuitive. It's not that it's not strategic, but it's just different. Collaborative. It's about- it's collaborative. It's about community. And he, so uh, through Bold Heart, I have worked with tens of thousands of women. So I have for 23 years. And I share that only because I've been able to witness women and how they work. And here's a few things that I hope will be super useful for our uh, female entrepreneurs here. Number one, we um, we do best in community. Mm-hmm. And here's what I mean. If you th- if if you study oxytocin and you study how we feel super supported, it's when we are we can talk through something and have people just listen to us without trying to fix us, right? So if you've never seen the YouTube the 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 little video on YouTube called it's not about the nail, you should go look that up, right? It's a little like I try to look at that video as being funny even though it could be you know, like making fun of the feminine. Nonetheless, we need to be listened to. We need to talk things things through and we need to feel like we are part of something bigger than ourselves. Um, and be championed. And when we have that, where people can see our brilliance, we can activate our potential for greatness. The masculine is just like, I've, you know, I've done the Tony Robbins, I've walked on the cold. You know, you can just like psych yourself yeah. up. But I, I, know. I mean, isn't it true that we all possess both of those energies, right? Absolutely. We all have the feminine and the masculine energy, and it shows up at different times. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm doing a money magnet club thing uh, right now with um, a whole bunch of ladies to generate a big, hairy, audacious revenue goal in 90 days. And I tell them that they need to access both. So mm-hmm. it's the it's the strategy, the hustle, like we're going to go sprint, sprint, make things happen. Do we reach outs for 90 days so that they make that whatever it's 100, 150,000 in, in three months. But you also need the mindset, the subconscious, the intuition, the the creating new neural pathways in the brain, the account, the loving accountability, the community, and you need both. And so yeah. sometimes you go into your hustle, but you got to come right back, or else you will deplete yourself. And I, I was, gonna- yes, I was just going to say I don't think they can exist independently because yeah. you know some people would argue it's all about mindset, and and mindset is is critical. Yet you need the strategy too to be able to get into action because it's those actions that bring the results. Um, but th- you can't have one without the other. It won't sustain yeah. won't the 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 goal. Really, you won't. Get yeah, there. you you can you can have all the affirmations and the great right. wealth mindset, but if you don't meet the divine halfway by saying yes to the opportunities right. and and making things happen. 
the program is not going to create itself. The client is not going to send sign themselves up. You need to meet God halfway, right? And take Absolutely. action. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think something else that you just said, you know, uh, we have to learn how to open ourselves up to trust our intuition, right? And tap into that inner voice because I think we're being guided all the time. And and again, I don't know if this is true for men in the same way, but I think as women, we tend to, you know, brush it off like that fly that's buzzing around because we think we're supposed to be doing something else. And, and it really it's listening to that inner voice to know when to harness which energy, to know when something needs, um, you know, collaboration and uh when something needs like the hustle because it's interesting more so in the last year I feel or the last couple of years you know the word hustle and grind has gotten such a bad connotation and I think it comes back to who you talk to um I think there's a lot to be said about generational um beliefs around you know which way we want to approach business and life and, and I think that it's not about all or nothing. I think sometimes you need the hustle and the grind. And yet there are times when maybe that's not going to serve you either. Well, let's go back to nature, right? So the, uh, the masculine, let's say, is the sun. The feminine is the moon in the darkness. Mm -hmm. If you were to have sun all the time, 24-7, 365, would the vegetables and the fruits grow? No, if you only had the moon and the darkness, 365, would the vegetables grow? No, same thing with if it's hot versus, you know, I'm saying, um, you know, uh, hot versus wet versus dry versus cold. You you need it all, right? And so the 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 idea is like do the strategy. The, in in fact, that's what the book is all about. The, the book is all about, here's the strategy, but you won't do it without the mindset. You need both. And the mindset is feminine because it has to do with the subconscious, which is the feminine realm. And the conscious is the masculine realm. And the conscious is where you plant the seed from the masculine into the feminine, right? From the conscious to the subconscious. And that is how you create results. I was on a Q and A with a woman yesterday who's on her way to seven figures. I have a program for that. And she was like, so in her head and we'll call her Jane. I was like, Jane, you realize like, you're just, you're being, you're like, there's a drunk monkey in your head and you need to give that drunk monkey a banana and tell it to sit down <laughs> and, go, yes. and go into your heart. And what does your heart tell you? And she's never been asked that in business before this. And from her heart space, she was able to have all the answers that she needed, but our society has for thousands of years rewarded the masculine and ridiculed the feminine. And so yeah. in, in any of those masterminds I've been a part of, fantastic though they were, no one ever asked me to check into my heart and to ask my intuition the answer. You, and there's you, room for that. You could quite possibly be the first person in a in a professional setting that I ever heard say drop into your heart and I can tell you that you know it, that was hard for me then I, I wasn't even sure what did that mean um, and I think that there are a lot of women who struggle with that in business they're almost afraid to let that part of them show up because then they worry about what other people will think of their capability or their leadership or you know am I am I you know tough enough to go out there and run the company or, you know, have my seat at the table. Um, how do you help women work through that? Well, if you understand, I don't talk about the pa patriarchy a lot, like publicly, but if you understand that this is just this worry, this fear of criticism, this fear of being, not being tough enough, um, is, is a byproduct of, and, you know, men suffer from the patriarchy too. We all do. And we have to be tough. They just don't and share it as often, right? They don't talk about it as much. Yeah. Yeah. And the the idea is that the the your intuition is so damn powerful. In fact, if if you if you understand that our socialization around being tough and being um 
strategic and logical as opposed to intuitive and magical and heart-led, they're just as powerful one as the other, but one of them has been ridiculed for 5,000 years. So of course, we high achieving women, we're not going to look like, you know, because we'll be called soft and we'll be co called not serious. I once had tears in my eyes uh, um, on stage one day and um, uh, I, I heard that women uh, were ridiculing me afterwards. Like, can you believe that she cried on the stage? And I was like, wow, like other women will even stab your back. And what I'm here to do is to remind us all that there is so much value in the strategy and the logic, but there is so much value in the intuition and the energetic. And yes. when you can master both, when you can come from your mind and your heart together in a yin and yang fashion, this is why our ladies crush it because I'm working on both sides of them. And you know what I have to tell you, Anna, I hid the, the intuition part, the law of attraction part, uh, the mindset part for years, the wealth consciousness part, because I was afraid that people would not take me seriously. I can relate to that. I, I have done the same thing and probably am, am still working through showing more of that, you know, in recent years, um, which is why I'm excited about, you know, doing this podcast, because it gives me an opportunity to open up and reveal some layers. Um, so I could talk about this for hours. Uh, and I also want to go back to um, the book that you just uh, released recently. Tell us again, the name of the book and the, um, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about leverage, because that's the counterpart to this. Absolutely. So the, the book is called The Leveraged Business. And it's how overwhelmed six-figure business owners reach seven figures with their life back. Mm -hmm. And the whole concept, it starts with mindset, mm -hmm. right? And the whole concept is what, what got you here won't get you there. Exactly. You actually have to, especially as a woman in business, you have to do less. So the whole thing, if anybody wants to write this down, it's, it's do less better. And this is what we, a lot of women said that say that they read the introduction and many of them have tears in their eyes and they're like, how do you know me so well? And I just describe who you are and like, what you're, you know, just like, what's not working. And she's like, oh my God. Yes. And the whole idea is the team that got you here will never get you there. The way you use your time to get here will never get you there. The systems or the lack of systems, the marketing or the lack of marketing, all of this. So it's a, the concept of leverage is, is this idea that you actually have to work a lot less to make a lot more. And I know that that sounds, again, could sound cheesy or overly markety. But if you well, think I about think it, for some people, it sounds counterintuitive, right? Because exactly. the system is is telling them, oh, no, 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 we have to work harder. We have to do more in order to have more. That's how we've been programmed. If, if it, it, one of the things I tell people all the time, uh, even if they never w w would consider uh, working with me, is to go to Bold Heart and go look at the success stories. And it's woman after woman after woman who said, I never thought I would reach seven figures. I never thought that I could actually take a full week away from my business without checking in. I never thought, I never thought, I never thought. Because the this, this idea of to work, if I want to grow, I need to work more, is this linear masculine energy that does not take into consideration a mindset change. So I don't give people the strategy until we address the fears, the beliefs, the self-image, and all of that. Because otherwise, remember when we were talking about the seed planting the conscious thought into the subconscious, which is feminine, I could give you, I could, you know, here, I can give you this seed, this acorn, right? That has in its DNA, uh, what it, what it takes to become a, a great oak tree. But if you're trying to plant the seed in concrete, the acorn in concrete, it's not going to happen. It's not going to come into this oak tree. So you actually have to put compost in the soil first. The equivalent of that is work on the mindset piece, the self-image, 
Eat clear it. out the weeds of I can't do it. It's going to take more work, etc. And then the strategy works. Yeah. Um, so what are what what would you say are some ways that um we if someone was listening to this and and the concept of leverage was really new to them, what's one thing that you would say to them right now that could get them to start to look at their time differently, look at you know, how they use their time really to, to get more done in less time. Okay. Perfect. Great question. Take the 80, 20 rule Mm -hmm. for fun. Let's just say you work 10 hours a day so we can have that 10, like 80, 20, right? Only about 20% of your activities and the way you use your time is producing 80% of the results. At the same time, 80% or eight hours of your day are spent on activities that are producing only 20% of your revenues. Right there is room for leverage. Why are we spending eight hours a day doing stuff that doesn't really produce that many results? What if we were to put a pause button on those activities, delegate, automate, eliminate, right? Then and I want then more time, delegate, automate, eliminate, eliminate. Okay. And actually get super strategic. Part, part of my job is, I mean, I have a lot of jobs with our ladies, but part of it is to give them permission to actually not do the things they don't want to do. So if you look at all the stuff that you're not good at, that you're not bringing in money, that you don't like, et cetera, and and you remove, delegate, or automate that, and you just focus on the growing the 20% of activities that are actually getting you results, making that 50%, five hours a day or eight hours a day, right there, we can get you to multiple six figures and seven figures it usually happens within three years. Because when we bring our focus in, right, when we narrow our focus, we can create bigger results. And I think that, you know, what we're experiencing, I've kind of um, taken the term, uh, the law of diminishing return, right? We, we just spread ourselves so thin that we're really not getting results. And I, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we stay stuck in our 80%. Sometimes it's just because those are the little easy things to check off. And for some people, they yeah. feel good about checking things off. Um, but it's really those, those 20% priorities that bring us further into where we want to be in our business. Yeah. There are so many things. I mean, when, when you read the book, we talk about money generating activities versus exponential growth activities. And the fact that you can't scale your business in between client appointments, Mm -hmm. you can't be checking off those little tiny things that give you instant gratification relief. Like I did it. I ordered supplies from, you know, whatever, um, office depot, those things are not growing your business. So the, it's not just how you use your time, but even how you leverage um, chapter six, chapter four is about um, leveraging your business model. And leverage your business model is where if you want to go from, let's say you have 10 clients, I'm making up a number 10 or 20 clients. If you want to get to seven figures, a million in your business, we got to leverage that business model. That means we got to have like, at least five times more clients or customers, if not 10 times, are you going to be able to do it? No, you're not. So we need to leverage your business model, leverage your intellectual property, leverage how you deliver your work to your clients. But all of that starts with looking at your mindset because there will always be, I've thought this so many times to so many thousands of women, there's a, oh, but they only want me. They will only pay for me. It won't work if I'm not holding their hand you know, et cetera. So I got to work on your mindset first to get you to a point of believing that you, they will buy it. They will want you. They will actually see that your leveraged business model is more valuable than you doing it with them and for them. And once I've got you at that place, then we implement. And again, within like you change your business model within 12 months, 12 to 18 months, boom. You can have double, 
What? It's incredible because I think that for um, a lot of people, they feel that um, seeing that kind of growth will take years and years and years or that it's out of reach. And it's, it's so fascinating when you put your energy in the right places, what you can accomplish. I'm just curious with, um, in your experience for, um, all the people that you've worked with and coached, do you find that women have more trouble with delegating, automating, or eliminating? Probably delegating. Mm -hmm. And because we have been socialized again. That we have in, to do it all. Yeah, to do it all that we, um, we've been socialized for 40,000 years to put the needs of others before our own. Uh, to, I actually am about to do a social media post on this. I, in the last three weeks, I have been, I've had people who are close to me say, wow, you're pretty high maintenance. Um, somebody else said, yeah, but like a friend, like, cause I was asking for something and, uh, somebody else said, uh, with a smile, like, wow, you're demanding. And, and somebody else said, uh, bossy. Now I'm, I'm neither demanding high maintenance or bossy. I ask for what I want and I know I'm worthy of it and I do not mind asking for it. And I don't mind saying no if something isn't for me because I have self-worth and value yes. in the world. And I've done so much personal growth and development, which is why I can help people with theirs, right? But in when you grow up without doing this mindset work and without doing the self-worth work, you, when somebody asks you to do something and you don't want to, we women have been socialized to think that we're a B-I-T-C-H if we say yeah. no. And yeah. so we say yes. And we put the obligations and needs of everybody else. And then we forget about like, we want to grow our business to seven figures, but we can't do that because we're doing things for people that because, just because they asked us. So there's a whole thing in there about uh delegating and about saying no it's not just delegating it's like the boundaries piece there are mm -hmm. some tears that come up when i teach boundaries to our ladies this goes deep because we've yeah. been told that we can't say no and 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 so we don't and so we look at like all of our obligations. we do we have to explain it and we have to apologize for it and sometimes no is just a complete sentence <laughs> but that's so hard when it you is it's done the a work lot of and you personal work it does i give i give people i give people actual scripts tell them how to say no in a way that's elegant and honoring but i'm telling you it's the hard player. for a lot of women it is. And, and, you know, the programming is, is so true because we watched our mothers and grandmothers and other, you know, generations, but other key women in our uh, lives and many of which maybe were never in business either. So, you know, some, for some of us, we didn't have a blueprint to follow. I didn't, you know, um, I'm, I'm one of very few actually, if maybe the only woman I have to think about that now in my family who is so entrepreneurial to, to the point that I love my mom dearly, but she, we got into this kind of funny conversation not long ago and um, we were talking about work. And, and so I finally looked at my mom and I said, mom, do you know what I do for a living? She's like, no, I have no idea. You know, your, your sister's an attorney. That's easy to understand. Your brother's a fireman. That's easy to understand. I know you've always been in business, but I have no idea what that is, you know? And yeah. so it's just fascinating that, you know, the programming and like what we have seen from other women in our lives, as I said back, you know, I didn't have a blueprint. So that's why it's so important for those of us who have, you know, paved the way, like you said, you've done the work, which is what gives you the ability to teach it. Same for me to be able to turn around and mentor each other. I find that that's challenging sometimes uh, in the business world that enough women they're seeking mentorship, but then they're afraid to offer it because they're concerned of what another woman will think of them for putting out the offer. I, I, um, I see that, but here's what I know from my own experience. I was looking for mentorship from a woman who was not only successful, 
at seven figures and multiple seven figures, but also spiritual, but also uh, had a healthy relationship mm. and children. And you know what, Anna? Trying to I find. could not find her. I could not find her. Yeah. Because a lot of the women were either had no kids and they don't know what it's like to have three kids. I mean, it is like, that's another full-time job. For sure. And, and if they're not spiritual, then I'm not as interested, you know, and if they're not, you know, so I had to create the thing for others. <laughs> I can't even be part of it because it's for other people, but we have to do this for ourselves. And here's what I want to add to what you said, which was, um, there were not very many role models. If you think about it, we're one of the first generations I believe of so. successful women entrepreneurs. Because my mom ended up, my mom worked all the time, and but she ended up being um, self-employed at the end of her life. Uh, she died at the age that I'm at right now, but like she probably didn't make 50K a year. And to think that I have, See, it, that like even I can tell, like I'm nervous to say what I'm about to say because I don't want to be judged. Say it, I'm here. I don't want to be judged, right? I um I asked my my bookkeeper uh, on my team two weeks ago uh, to calculate everything, like all the money that has been generated in my business in 23 years, and she said you're close to 50 million. Wow. Congratulations. And, and to think that my mom like mm -hmm. probably didn't even make 50 K a year in her own business. Yeah. Like this is the first generation as I see it, where this is normal, but even we had to first learn from the men. I mm -hmm. love the men. I am so grateful. I was in those masterminds and all that mentorship but I had to translate it to my life, the the yeah. feminine, the mother, the I want to have a really nice marriage and I don't want to emasculate my husband because I want, you know, some of that at night, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, right, exactly. You want a healthy relationship with your husband for sure. Yeah. And so we've got to, we've got to own it. We've got to own it, but in a feminine perspective, not... I see so many women acting like men in their business. I'm like, wow, wow. Yeah, I, I do. So it's, a, it's, a, it's about the courage to be authentic. It's what, which is what you and I first started talking about is how can you apologetically yourself? How can you um, do it, do business your way, the feminine way? How can you get your needs met with some oxytocin, some, some community, from some daily accountability? How do you, how do you, how do you take up more space and ask for that and invest in yourself to get that? That's the point that you were saying just a few minutes ago is this idea of find, find the mentorship, find the woman who is that example for you and just align with her. Yes. Uh, such a great conversation today, Fabienne. And uh, I, I may have you come back on the show again because we I would love it things. And, and, you know, I've learned a lot from you in, in this time together for myself and have had the opportunity to do a little reflection too, because I can relate to so many things that you said. Um, my mom basically was a stay-at-home mom. I mean, she worked when she first got married. And then when she had me, she stayed home. And uh, I was about 11 when she went back to work. And six months later, she got pregnant with my brother. And, you know, my mom is, is a wonderful woman who's done a lot to take care of her family, but it wasn't, you know, for her, the professional world was not, you know, part of, of her life journey. And, um, I think what you said here is just so powerful that we have to trust that when we show up authentically, when we connect with our feminine power, that it is, um, it is strength. It is not weakness and that there is a place for that in our business and I think that the people that we lead and the clients that we serve need it. They crave it. Um, and I think that that's part of getting where we need to be faster too. Um, and I, I do have a question before we start to wind down today. I know that um, with your business, um, you've had a couple of um, things that were a pivot, one of which was your branding. So I would love to know what, uh, you know, 
kind of brought that on, how you went from Klein Attraction to Bold Heart, which I love that name so much. Um, and maybe talk to us a little bit about what your services are and what people could do to connect with you as well after listening to you today. Mm, thank you. The um, We were called clientattraction.com for many years and it felt like I was um, trapped mm. because I started teaching things like um, mindset, like money magnetism, like, uh, and, and other things. And I wanted to go into this, um, this wealth consciousness and, and do all this other stuff, but like, it wasn't even about client attraction anymore. I, I, I love to take women to much higher levels, multiple six and seven figures. And that's not about client attraction. It's about leverage, right? Yes. But I also felt like, okay. And worthiness too. Worthiness. There's so much stuff. And I wanted to do some of the things I'm doing today. Uh, and I couldn't fit it into that tiny container. And so I hired um, a branding person who was actually in my program. And um, and it was a, is a male. And he, he said, yeah, like I know I was go going to him with ideas like the entrepreneurial business school or whatever. And he was like, I want to present something to you that you are not expecting. And he presented a whole bunch. And I said, you tell me which one he's like bold heart. And I was like, I, I, like, I was like speechless. I'm like bold heart. And he goes, you are always telling us to put our ear to our heart and listen hard and then boldly take action on what our heart wants. And it's, he says, it's the perfect uh, combination of feminine and masculine. Like mm -hmm. the heart is the feminine and the bold action and the fearlessness and, and the bravery and the courage to, to, to go beyond and activate your potential for greatness. And then it, it, he said, you can do bold heart business and then bold heart life and bold heart woman and bold heart youth and bold heart, you know, um, publishing and bold heart vacations. And so I'm actually doing all of like a lot of I those. Know, right I now. love it. Yeah. And I'm doing a delicious life. I'm doing retreats in Provence for women around self-worth and it, I don't want to stay in a lane, Anna, this, I don't, somebody once told me this switch to bold heart is marketing suicide. And I, I let that affect yeah. me for years. And he's like, you should just stay in your lane. And I was like, Oh, and you know, it affected me. I was, I really list, I gave him too much power by listening. And, and I, I am, I'm widening the lane. I, I've got a lot of lanes and yeah. I have to be apologetic about that. And when I first started telling women about this, they're like, oh my God, Fabian, you're, I feel the same way. I'm interested in business, but also spirituality. And I'm interested in cooking and having a delicious marriage. And why can't I teach on all of them? And so that's a long answer. <laughs> to no, it's, short a great, it's a beautiful answer. And I, I got goosebumps listening to you because it's, in, it's inspiring and I think that it gives other women permission to look at their life too. And just what you said is brilliant because it's true. And while there might be a place for saying, you know, using that term, stay in your lane, I, I guess maybe in a sense of, you know, in a company, you know, where we make sure everyone's clear about what their role is in the company. But when we we can't apply everything to our whole life, and and we're so multidimensional, and we're meant to experience life on so many levels. Why would we want to ignore some parts of that or quiet the voice? You know, and I and I think that you know you have really shown up in a way, you know, you live in France now um, mm -hmm. and you didn't always live in France. I know your, your, your heritage is um, uh, your father's, were you born in France or were you born? I was in born in France, but I left for the U S at the age of 10. Okay. Um, and so, you know, again, just the way you live your life so authentically and apologetically is inspiring. And, um, you know, I think that we need more of that. We need to see that in action because we need the blueprint sometimes, right? Going back to that, we just need to know what it can look like. And, um, you know, that that was why I wanted to, you know, bring you on the, on the show today, because mm -hmm. I find that, you know, you're very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you asked if anybody wants to just check stuff out. 
Um, go to boldheart, boldheart.com. Follow me on the socials. Uh, uh, read the book, take the assessment. Like I've got so a, a ton of free tools. And one of the things I really appreciate is I'm doing things even more from my heart now, where it's just like, I'm just here to pour into people. There's just more, more, more value for free results in advance. And you know, if one day they just want to come back around and dive deeper, they will, but it's never a hard sell. It, and it, you know, in closing, I just want to say that is the result of leverage. Because when you're working in a business and you're working hard to do everything and be everything, you can't give as much as you'd like. You can't come from a place of contribution as often as you'd like, whether it's because of time or finances, right? You're at a point in your in your business, in your career now that you can really focus on who, how, when, and why you want to give and do it. And, and that's the result of, of leverage. Exactly. Yeah. And, Thank and you tying so much. it into your life's purpose, you know. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, that's a that's our next conversation, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know that's the age old question, right? Is you know why am I here? And you know we've heard and read so much about that. And um, again, I think we can overcomplicate it. And it it is really dropping into your heart and getting clear about what you know and being brave enough to follow it. So that that could be our next conversation. Let's do it. I love yeah. teaching this. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much for being here. This was so awesome. It was a blessing to have this time with you. And thank you for that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I trust that everyone listening got what they needed from it. So thank you again. And uh, thank you all of you for, for being here and listening. We'll, we'll definitely chat with Fabienne again in the future. Thank you, Anna. And thanks, everybody. Lots of love. Mm. Thanks. Love back.